Welcome back. Joining us now is Michelle Cambolis, a clinical therapist and vice chair of BC Mental Health Foundation. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Michelle, for North of 49ers, uh, mental health is uh, an increasingly um, prevalent issue. Is that the case, or are people simply stepping up to the plate more and saying, I need to address this and, and, and are being open about it? Well, yeah, I think people are, are definitely becoming more aware. I mean, unfortunately, with mental health, there's still a really significant stigma attached. And so there's a fear around it, and there's so much that we aren't really offering out in terms of treatment, support, and education. We've got a, a really long way to go. It's interesting you would introduce this word fear because it, ideally, it's something like, I have a broken leg or, or arm, or I, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a heart uh, condition. Why is it that, that a mental health issue is something that people are so loath to discuss or reveal, that, that it's something with which they're wrestling? Well, I think that people still really don't regard it as a serious illness, and it's really interesting because when you ask older adults about this, about 25% still believe that something as serious as depression, which can be really debilitating, is really just an issue of character, that it's not really a, a medical problem. So it, it, it's something that falls back on the person who's dealing with the problem. They get almost re-traumatized saying, well, I, I just need to be stronger. I need to, I need to be clearer and, and through my own willpower I can overcome this. Yeah, and they worry that people are going to see them differently, that they're going to see them as, as weak. And, and, um, and unfortunately, what that ends up doing is it decreases the likelihood that people get the help that they want and need. The, the treatment and the assessment um, ends up really going by the wayside. And what we know about mental health is this. If you don't get treatment right away, the likelihood of overcoming the mental illness um, becomes just all that more difficult. And is it more difficult for North of 49ers in a way because the way the, the, the zeitgeist or the, 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 the times in which North of 49ers were raised were such that you just packed your troubles away and got on with it no matter what and shame on you if you do have an issue? Well, that's a big part of it. And, and I think that what a lot of North of 49ers don't understand is that there are certain mental health problems that they're far more likely to get than the general population. So, so much of this is really um, a lack of information and education and, and that's where we really need to step up. Okay, well we have a chance right now. What, what are some of the issues that they really need to be vigilant about and aware and open to the possibility that might be going on? Okay, so I mean people need to know first of all that um, mental health risk overall doesn't increase but there are really specific mental illnesses that, that do. Um, dementia is the obvious one. But um, what a lot of people don't understand is that depression, um, a very serious mental illness, as well as um, substance problems, specifically alcoholism, increase as you get older. And if you have any kind of lineage or genetic predisposition in your family, the older you get, the more likely it is that that's going to show up. Now, I know this is what the foundation is dedicated to, but how do we build on the strength and courage of, of, of people who are prepared to talk about um, their issues. Well, I think what you do is you start within your family mm. and, and you have discussions around the table and, um, and anywhere, and you need to discuss everything from pre prevention to um, where there might be vulnerabilities within the family so that um, you're attuned to the fact that there are certain things that you're at high risk for. And then we take it from there. We need to discuss this issue in schools in the workplace. We need to make sure that, um, that businesses have supports in place and, and screening days so that people in the workplace are, are getting the help that they, that they need. So what really is possible in terms of treatment? If, are, we, are we looking at drugs most of the time or is it talk therapy or, or is it simply um, uh, saying get out and exercise more and acknowledge you have a problem and be kind to yourself accordingly? You're bringing up a really important issue because our medical system really only supports um, medication-focused treatment. So when it comes to other really critical treatments like cognitive behavioral therapy, which is 
excellent, we know, for depression and anxiety, it just simply isn't available. And even if you have the dollars to pay for it, there aren't enough practitioners that actually practice it. And you've got other countries like Australia and New Zealand that provide it as their basic care, and yet we're, we're completely missing it. We have a ways to go. We certainly do. And BC Mental Health Foundation has a lot of work ahead of it. We're doing our best. Good luck to you, and thank you very much for being there. Thank you. North of 49, a guide to the rest of your life.